Nargos are surely some of the most desirable bikes on the planet. No matter how long you've been into cycling, you'll have a mental image of one being ridden to victory by a legend of the sport. There's much more to them than just race winning pedigree. There's a, a certain flair, an Italianness, a je ne sais quoi. Actually, sorry, hang on, that's French. So when Colnago said, we are launching something very, very special, can we make a video with you about it? We said, oh my days, yes. And so here it is, the latest and greatest, the Colnago C68. But that is not all because here it also is the latest and greatest, the Colnago C68 tie, custom sized with 3D printed titanium. C68 is the newest member of Colnago's Made in Italy carbon bike dynasty, which can trace its roots back to the concept 35 years before. The design focus was on making the best, most desirable bike for cycling connoisseurs, and not specifically to win races, because they've got other bikes in the range that can do that. Like Colnago's other C-Series bikes before it, the construction is not a one-piece carbon monocoque frame, but it loses its lugged construction and therefore making it markedly different to its predecessors. But like its predecessors, there is still a custom option, courtesy of a model with a very exclusive 3D printed titanium head tube providing the tunability. Colnago are also launching a direct-to-consumer model with a special white glove delivery option where someone from the company will deliver your bike to your door and set it up for you. Plus, when you buy one, you get a unique NFT linked to your bike that's intrinsic to the boutique buying process as well as being transferable proof of ownership. As I've just mentioned in our headlines, Colnago have split their range of carbon bikes into two lines. So on the one hand, they've got their V-series, like the V3RS, which is used by Tade Pogaccia to win, well, just about everything, in fact. Colnago say that the V-series are designed to be as fast as possible, which means aerodynamics, stiffness, lightweight, where they're made doesn't matter, it's all about winning. V for victory, or Vittoria, sings for Italian, or perhaps Velocita, speed. The C-Series, of which this is now the pinnacle, is therefore separated from the burden of having to be just super fast. So Colnago have been liberated in the design process and are able then to focus simply on making the best and most desirable bike for enthusiast road cyclists, which is a very cool brief to have, but probably one that's actually far harder to achieve. For a start, I mean, what is it that pros have that we don't want? I mean, for me, a fast light bike is what I'm after, not some glorified touring bike. And so perhaps to understand that point a little better, we need to understand a little bit more about where this bike has come from. Colnago was founded by Ernesto Colnago in 1954. The origins are humble, a simple mechanics workshop in Via Garibaldi in Cambiago. But Ernesto was, is clearly a talented man and a brilliantly innovative thinker, so his reputation grew quickly. He worked with the likes of Fiorenzo Magni and Eddie Merckx, and through the 70s and 80s was at the forefront of pro racing. However, to me it gets really interesting in the mid 80s, with a collaboration with Ferrari that yielded the concept. A carbon frame with hydraulic brakes and a gearbox that sent tech to the next level. But it wasn't just a concept though. On the 35th anniversary of the founding of Colnago, the C35 was launched, and it drew on one of the key learnings from the concept, a monocoque carbon frame, one of the first around. 
Then came the C40 on the 40th anniversary. It was the first carbon bike to really dominate racing. A carbon tube frame with carbon lugs that wowed pros of the time with its lightweight and ride quality, but still allowing them to have custom bikes. To ride a production bike was unthinkable for the likes of Museo, Taffy, Ballerini, et al. A decade later came the C50, and after that we begin to see the deviation, because the Extreme Series followed, which promised ultimate stiffness for racers, meaning that the C59 could then just deliver the ultimate ride for cycling enthusiasts. So it could focus on ride quality and handling and responsiveness, uniqueness, with that made in Italy tag, still manufactured in the legendary Colnago factory under the watchful eyes of Ernesto himself. The C60 and the C64 took that further, leading us now to the C68. Made in Italy, unique, designed to be ridden and adored in equal measure. I like that. And we do still want fast light bikes, it's just when that pursuit of performance is pushed so far it then begins to compromise sheer enjoyment, like massively stiff rigid frames designed to handle a gazillion watts or super long, super low positions, or perhaps handling that's been tuned around a massive 130mm stem and then leaves the bike feeling twitchy and nervous for the rest of us. And also, frankly, which pro cyclist honestly cares about where their bike was made and who made it? Let's dive into some tech, shall we? I mentioned that this bike is markedly different to its predecessors, which used lugged construction, which is where you have carbon tubes that are then bonded into carbon junctions, which are called lugs. This one does away with that. However, it's still made from the same number of pieces as its predecessor. Now, you get a top tube section, you get a head tube, down tube section, you get a bottom bracket, seat tube section, and you also get the stays at the back. The reason for doing it this way, Colnago says, is that it actually allows for a greater degree of customization. Whereas on the previous version, you could customize the reach of the bike. On this, you can customize the reach and also the stack as well. And the reason for doing it this way over a more traditional monocoque design, again, it allows for customization that you couldn't get there. But also, Colnago say, by making the frame in smaller pieces, you get a much greater degree of control over the lamination process of the carbon manufacture. So effectively you get high quality tube sections. The evolution of this frame means that this model in a size 51 like I've got here is 930 grams. Now this standard version, if I could ever describe such a bike as this as standard, comes in seven sizes. The horizontal top tube options that you got with the predecessors are no more on this bike anyway. More on that a little bit later on. But what about the custom titanium version? Well, interestingly, the 3D printed section, which is this bit that's glossy black here, does actually act as a lug. And by changing the dimensions of it, you can change the effective length of the top tube and also the height of the top here, so the reach and stack. And you can also tweak the handling characteristics of the bike as well. The reason they're using 3D printing is because each part that they make can be completely customizable without adding any complexity to the manufacturing process beyond tweaking the designs in CAD. Now, the company that Colnago are working with to do this are an Italian company that specialize in making medical equipment, but can now also add making works of art parts for bikes to their CV as well. And the reason they're using titanium for this is because from a mechanical engineering perspective, titanium works harmoniously with carbon, so I'm told. It's also super light. It's on a par with carbon for a structure like this. And then, of course, is the fact that it is printable. So incredibly thin layers of titanium powder are laid down successively and then formed into solid metal with laser beams. Can't say that without grinning. 
Now, whilst we're talking options, some of you will be pleased, or at least a minority of you may be pleased, to know that Colnago are offering a rim brake option to this bike as well. Not available from launch, but it will be coming soon. And I think that's kind of cool, given that Colnago were, to my knowledge anyway, the first company to offer a disc brake road bike back in 2012. It's cool that they're still giving people the choice. Now, you wouldn't often think about Colnago's and practicality in the same breath, not because the bikes aren't practical, but well, to my mind anyway, bikes like this don't need to be practical. But nevertheless, there are still some really neat touches here. We've got a threaded bottom bracket. It's using the T47 standard, which is well established now. There is also a 10 function multi-tool that lives in the steerer here and weighs not much more than the through axle handles that you can now dispense with. And then lastly, something I'm particularly excited about, there is a lifetime guarantee on the headset bearings. I know. I mean, I'd like to think that even I wouldn't end up pulling a rusty seized headset bearing out of a bike like this, but Conago are using Ceramic Speed's solid lubrication technology bearings which are the stuff that dreams are made of, frankly. Only my dreams? All right. Now, lastly, I mentioned that there was no longer a horizontal top tube option on this bike like there have been on previous C models, but there are two more C68s coming. An all-road version and, wait for it, a gravel version. Oh yes, my mind is blown. It's like finding out Ferrari are going to make SUVs. Although, Colnago do currently have a gravel bike, but a C68 gravel bike? Woo. Now, they're not ready to release any information on either of those bikes yet, other than to say that they're coming, and that the geometry on the all-road bike will be more upright and more relaxed, akin to the current horizontal top two geometry on the current C64 model. And as for the gravel bike, well, given that they sponsor ex-World Tour Pro Nathan Haas for gravel racing, I personally am gonna be taking a keen interest on what he's riding this year. Because he strikes me as a C68 kind of a guy. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that the buying experience was also going to change. In reality, another option is being added, is that you'll be able to buy directly from the Colnago website. But it's not just a process of selecting your size and adding it to your basket. Colnago have been creating a 3D configurator for the website and also building an app as well. So anyone will be able to spec up their very own Colnago C68, including choosing custom colours. There are four standard ones in the carbon one, one titanium option, but then you can also go nuts. I can imagine that proving quite a popular bit of escapism, and I'm told there'll even be an augmented reality function as well, taking you one step closer to that dream bike. If you are then lucky enough to be able to complete the purchase and buy one, Colnago at that point automatically create an NFT that will be linked inextricably to your bike for eternity. And that will be delivered to you virtually whilst you wait for the real bike to be built, which is a process that will take between 90 and 180 days, Colnago say. Whilst you're waiting though, they're planning to create unique multimedia assets that will effectively allow you to see your bike coming together. Then, when your bike is delivered, potentially, as we've touched on already, by hand, by a Colnago employee, should you pay that little bit extra, complete with Colnago bike box and Colnago cycling kit for you, that NFT then functions as a digital passport for your bike that gives you proof of ownership, but also the ability to transfer ownership to someone else should you ever wish to part with your C68. But it's typically Colnago kind of move, which is to say bold, something a little bit different and potentially a bit of a trendsetter. Now we've actually got a documentary on GCM Plus where we got to spend time with Ernesto Colnago himself and it gives you a great insight into the inner workings of the brand and he talks himself through some of those historic bold trendsetting moves. So definitely check that out if you're a fan of Colnago, which I imagine you are. Lastly, there's the... Um, <clears throat> The price, the elephant in the room. 
Make no mistake, these are premium products and therefore the price tag reflects it. Like, there is no talk of value here. These are luxury items like Ferraris or Richard Nilo watches. So brace yourself. The price for a carbon frame set is 5,650 euros. For the titanium custom option, it's 6,600 euros. To get custom paint is an extra 1,200 euros on top of that. Meaning that were you to choose a C68 tie with custom colors and a Campagnolo Super Record EPS group set, you'd be looking at about 18,000 euros. And if you want it hand delivered by a Colnago employee, you're looking at closer to 20,000 euros. Like I said, this price tag puts this bike so far out of the realm of simply a tool to do a job. It puts it in another stratosphere entirely. And it'll definitely win as many fans as it loses for this unashamed pursuit of ultimate desirability. But that's okay. I mean, this bike is only ever going to be an option to a tiny minority of people. The rest of us will just have to dream of it. But in my opinion, the cycling world is better for having super bikes like this. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below though. But right now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to savour a few last moments riding this bike that I will never be able to afford. <laughs>